welcome to NTD China News, I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Thursday, March 14. No surprises as Xi Jinping takes over as President of China. Beijing warns the new pope against meddling with his control over religion. And a Xinjiang official denies security has been strengthened after last week's knife attack. China's once-in-a-decade transition of power was completed earlier today. But the election of China's new leader is widely considered a little more than a farce, giving a democratic veneer to China's one-party rule. That's why it was little surprise the leader of the Communist Party has once again come out on top. It came as little surprise. Xi Jinping, head of the Chinese Communist Party, has just been elected president of China in a near-unanimous vote. With 99.86 percent of the vote, she also became chairman of the People's Republic of China's Central Military Commission. The vote was made earlier today by the 12th National People's Congress, or NPC. Although it's made up of several political parties, they're all controlled by the ruling Communist Party. Thus, the NPC is generally considered nothing more than a rubber stamp Congress for the Communist Party. Xi Jinping's deputy is Li Yunqiao. Like Xi, the new vice president is also a princeling and is seen as close to Xi's predecessor, Hu Jintao. Reuters reported on Wednesday that Li beat another candidate to the job, Liu Yunshan, someone favored by Jiang Zemin, the former president and Hu Jintao's political foe. We see clearly that the so-called election is just a formality. Reuters revealed that Li Yuanchao's appointment shows Xi Jinping's influence, and it trumped the arrangement by Jiang Zemin. With the quote-unquote election today, China's once-in-a-decade transition of power comes to a close. On Friday, the NPC will elect China's premier, the number two position in the Chinese government. And just like Xi was expected to become president, current vice premier Li Keqiang will almost undoubtedly become China's new premier, replacing Wen Jibao. As Xi Jinping officially takes over China's presidency, a prominent Chinese dissident was summoned and beaten by state security officials. Beijing-based Hu Jia announced via his Twitter account earlier today that he just finished eight hours of summons. He posted this picture showing an injury to his head, saying he was beaten, quote, pretty badly. Hu Jia said he was summoned to a police station but was questioned by state security officers. They told him one of the reasons he was called in was because of his recent criticism of Xi Jinping and other senior Chinese leaders. Hu Jia has advocated for the rights of AIDS patients as well as environmental issues. He is a vocal critic of the communist regime and was imprisoned between 2008 and 2011 on subversion charges. Less than 24 hours after the Vatican had Pope Francis ascend to the papacy, the Chinese regime is laying out what it expects the new pope's foreign policy should be with China. Earlier today, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said the new Argentinian pope should not interfere with China's internal affairs in the name of religion. She claims that if the Vatican wants to improve ties with the Chinese regime, it will have to do two things. First, it must cut ties with Taiwan. The Communist Party views the island as a breakaway province and has vowed to reclaim it. It's often a prerequisite for foreign entities wishing to engage China that they must no longer recognize representatives from Taiwan. The second thing the Vatican must do is not meddle in how the officially atheist Communist Party manages China's Catholics, including appointing bishops and cardinals. There are about 12 million Catholics in China, and they are divided into those who worship in state-sanctioned churches and those who often find themselves on the wrong side of the law. Although the Chinese Communist Party and the Vatican have been at odds with one another for a long time, Catholics in China have their own views of the new pope. Here's more. The Catholic Church is a new pope. After half a month of intense speculation over who would replace Pope Benedict XVI, it was Pope Francis from Argentina who has emerged as the new leader of the Vatican. In China, the official government response to the new pope has been frosty. But for China's estimated 8 to 12 million followers of the Catholic Church, the response was different. It is normal that religion is not accepted in an atheist country. But we Christians believe in Jesus. It doesn't matter what other people think or whether the government supports it or not, or whether it has problems with the Vatican. It doesn't affect the relationship between us and God, because we worship God directly, so I recognize the new pope. China's Catholic Church is controlled by the Communist Party. All clergy members have to be approved by the Chinese regime. This has been a point of tension with the Vatican, which says that only the church can appoint its bishops. 
This Catholic group leader says she hopes the new pope can work together with Chinese bishops to bring world peace. We hope our bishops from different church communities can work together with the new pope to bring peace to the world. The last bishop who was approved by both Beijing and the Vatican disappeared after quitting China's Patriotic Catholic Association. That's the officially sanctioned church of worship by the Communist Party. In-home Christians or those worshipping outside the PCA are subject to harassment and fines if discovered worshipping in private. As Xi Jinping and the new leadership take helm of the Communist Party, they're faced with challenges ahead. One is over how they will address the tension between authorities and ethnic minorities who have long complained of suppression under communist rule. Chinese state-run Global Times said on Thursday that security in the far western Xinjiang region is at, quote, normal levels, quote, after reports that the area has been placed under a high security alert. Radio Free China reported on Tuesday that authorities tightened security in the central and southern parts of Xinjiang. It follows a knife attack last Thursday that killed four people in the city of Korla. The Xinjiang spokeswoman denied security has been ramped up, saying that the police patrols are normal in the city. The renewed violence in Xinjiang came during the communist regime's two sessions political meetings. Analysts say it's time that the regime changes its heavy-handed approach towards ethnic minorities. This hard suppression goes against the order of modern society and civilization. It does nothing to achieve stability. The regime needs to be respectful towards the minorities' cultures, economic and political rights. This is how you unite the nation. It's unclear what sparkled last Thursday's attack. China's Xinjiang region is home to largely Muslim Uyghurs. They complain that their culture and religion have been suppressed by Chinese authorities. The Chinese regime says it's developing the region and making use of its natural resources. In 2009, bloody ethnic riots broke out in Xinjiang's capital, Urumqi. The region is under constant security patrol. RFA reports that a curfew was put in place after the most recent violence. And still ahead on NTD China News, China's central bank governor issues inflation warning. And why chopsticks are eating up China's forests. And welcome back. China's central bank governor has warned against inflation, saying the Chinese regime needs to be on high alert. On the sidelines of the National People's Congress, Zhou Xiaochen said on Wednesday the People's Bank of China aims to keep the inflation rate at 3.5 percent this year. The warning comes after February's consumer index rose to a 10-month high of 3.2 percent. Last week, outgoing Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao announced that regulators plan to increase the country's money supply by 13 percent this year. On Wednesday, Zhou said this increase means the central bank is taking a neutral monetary policy and claims this will not add to inflationary risks. Next, we go to southwest China's Guizhou province, where once again China's dangerous mines have claimed their latest victims. 21 miners have died after a mine explosion in China's southwest Guizhou province. 83 miners were in the pit at the time of the accident. 58 managed to escape, but four men remain trapped. 20 of the miners were injured. State-run media reports stay in a stable condition in hospital. Rescue efforts are being hampered by high levels of toxic gas. We will keep working to reduce the density of the toxic gas in the shaft as we go deeper down. The shaft where the four miners might be trapped is 70 to 80 meters long, so we're not sure whether the four miners can be rescued at this time. Xinhua News Agency reports three mine managers have been sacked and taken into police custody. It's unclear how the gas explosion happened. China's heavy demand for energy combined with poor safety standards has made the country's mines a deadly place to work. Ivory can be used to make expensive chopsticks. On the other hand, the cheap disposable kind create their own problem, because making these wooden utensils is taking a big bite out of the country's forests. China has an insatiable appetite, not for noodles or dumplings, but for disposable chopsticks. Each year, 20 million trees are felled to make chopsticks. That's about 4,000 chopsticks per tree, making for a total of 80 billion chopsticks per year. China isn't just eating up their meals, they're eating up their forests. 
The figures were put forward by Bai Guangxin last Friday during a meeting of the rubber stamp parliament. Bai is the head of a major forestry group. He says the amount of chopsticks churned out each year cover Tiananmen Square 363 times over. Deforestation in China is causing a host of environmental issues. It's been blamed for mudslides that have killed hundreds. The choking sandstorms that have swept through parts of the country are also partly caused by deforestation. The debate over disposable chopsticks isn't new. In 2006, Chinese authorities levied a 5% tax on the utensils. In 2008, several Chinese celebrities led a campaign to stop using them. Aside from the environmental impact, disposable chopsticks can also be unsafe. In 2012, authorities in Guangxi seized batches of semi-finished disposable chopsticks being produced with toxic chemicals like paraffin wax and industrial sulfur. So what's the solution? For one, Bai Guangxin says diners could start carrying their own chopsticks around the next time they eat out. And that's all we have time for for this NTD China News. For more about China-related content, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our YouTube channel, NTD on China. Coming up next is China Focus with Shelly Zhang. Stay tuned.